quite a lot of our listeners listen while they're working. Do, well, they listen to us while they're working? Yes, they do, because they do graphic, dis- you do graphic design work or something like that. Some, oh, right. some, some work you can listen while you're working. God, you wouldn't think anyone could concentrate with us banging on, would you? But they- no, no, <laughs> exactly. Own It, Your Business and Your Life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Good morning, Judith, from sunny Sunderland. Well, before sunny Sunderland, look at that gorgeous picture of New York City you're showing me. Yes, it's nice, isn't it? Good old ambience. Yeah. They have started to try and upsell me on things, though, now. Who? Momentum, the people who do the screen sharing thing. Ah, Okay. So they occasionally pop up and offer me the pro account. So that's how they're monetizing. Obviously, some people take them up on it. Yeah, so look, you can see 10 degrees Sunderland. We've already been out for a hold it, hold it callers. 5,650 step walk. Oh, good effort. <laughs> and it, it, I came across the perfect end for the, today's podcast episode on the beach. So well, you've got something to look forward to. Yeah, very good. Is that in the who or what's impressed? Yes, exactly. Because, well, I really struggled in that section this week. I found something in the end, but for several days I had it blank on my sheet. And I thought I'm going to have to turn up and say nothing and nobody has impressed me this week. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> not even yourself oh, well I actually yes I have impressed myself and if push had come to shove I would have stuck me in there but um, <laughs> I found something so that's good healthy self esteem yes finding something that you've impressed about yourself yes, yes. <laughs> and how's things with you how's your week been yeah they're good um, I've had some unexpected client experiences um, I was excited last week that I had four people working my way through my process and two of them didn't work out for reasons I'm about to explain to you. One of them I had to turn away because they wanted me to help them with a business plan which would enable them to get residency in a European nation by box ticking to impress bureaucrats. Oh, Nicola, I'd rather go down a coal mine for six months than do something like that, honestly. <laughs> I, I would. And I said, not only is this not my expertise in England, I certainly don't know how to do it in Norway or Denmark or wherever she was. And it was the, the shortest call, I, a discovery call I've ever done at six minutes. I said, I'm so sorry. This, you know, I did warn our ref, your referrer that this was not my expertise. I have no patience whatsoever with business plans or bureaucrats or box picking. So can't do that. And another one of my four didn't show up after having sent me a 22 confident, 22 page confidential, no. 22 page confidential business plan, which I diligently printed out and studied in advance of our meeting. Oh, good God. Then didn't, didn't show up and hasn't emailed to explain uh, non-appearance. That's astonishing, isn't it? It's very odd. Uh, so I was very odd to one potential client, and another potential client was very odd to me. So I've had some oddities this week. Yeah, out of the out of the norm. Yes, both out of the norm, actually, both out of the norm. Yeah. Well, I've spent the week in Shoreham. I've only just arrived in Sunderland yesterday, um, and a very effortless journey it was, considering it's one end of the country to the other. Because yeah. I figured figured out a way how to get past that thing of having to get the tube across London. Okay. You change East Croydon and you get on the Bedford train, which takes you to St Pancras. And then you go on a nice jolly little walk through the, you know, the the big atrium at St Pancras through to the big atrium at King's Cross. And I'm not joking. They were not very far apart. from. No, no, they're next door to one another. Yeah. Yeah. I have in the past gone out of the front along the road and back in the front of the other one. But there's actually a little walkway now that someone let me know about. And um, it's literally 50 yards. It's amazing. Okay. And so, you know, then I got on another train at King's Cross and, and alighted at Durham, 
<laughs> square I never thought I'd hear myself say arriving at. <laughs> and Irene met me from there, and it's it's all been very pleasant since then. You're so far north, your ears must be bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then sure. this, this this week in Shoreham, we've all been about supporting Phoebe's because she's had um, a big editing job on. She's done her first personal branding video for um, Pete Jenkins, who's a mate of mine, and um, there were quite a lot of little. She, well, she first of all, she had to push through the hurdle of, you know, you get all this footage and you've got to sift through the footage to find the good bits. Then you've got to try and compile it. And it's storytelling, Judith. You have to tell a little story in two and a half minutes with lots of little clippings and things. And, um, there were, you know, she, she kept getting me to watch it. And there were bits I suggested that she felt afterwards made it better. So I felt like I'd contributed to the process. Yeah, rather than the, Very good, which you couldn't yeah. have done quite so easily from afar, could you? No, yeah, I could have done because it was just about watching it and having ideas. But she's now got a template for how to put these branding videos together. So she's starting on her next one very imminently. And I think so, she's much more confident because of that. So, Nicola, let me tell you what you've just done. What? You've begun the podcast by telling me about public transport and about video, two of my least favourite topics. <laughs> well, at least I'm not going to tell you about the ring road around Kalamata, which is something that obsesses everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else about your week? Um, no, not really. It's been a, it, it, it has been a weird week. I was quite, um, I was battling my, my inner thoughts last weekend because it was very grey. It's been very grey in Shoreham. And um, I, got, I came out of it fine. But and it was an interesting exercise because I, I became aware that I was using what they call pessimistic language, which is the three Ps, which is permanent, pervasive and personal. And um, I, I caught myself doing it and was able to change my language patterns in my head around and that made me feel much better so that's a useful tip for anyone who's feeling a bit you know miserable about stuff are you using the three p's in your head and if so stop it immediately because if, if you say something it's the way you say things like oh this always happens to me that's that's pervasive and personal and then if it's permanent and pervasive and, and you know oh, this it's going to be like that you know you're just assuming that everything's nothing's ever going to change yeah and things are always going to be like that and um, it's just a really useful exercise. I got it from Learned Optimism, um, Martin Seligman. Is it Martin Seligman? Anyway, Learned Optimism, a great book about how to change your thinking from pessimistic and personal, permanent and pervasive to optimistic, upbeat, temporary and not personal. Yeah, I mean, language is terribly important and powerful. And somebody said to me last week, oh, this is dire. I went, oh, I don't think it's dire. <laughs> oh, they were exaggerating. Yeah, it's a little bit low. Yes. <laughs> I am fond of an exaggeration for drama myself. Well, me too. We all are, really, yes. But you have to know when you're using it in fun and when you actually mean it. Yes, and and, and not for it, neither to be habit-forming, so to deliberately choose your words. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing was I did a spectacularly sp a bad marketing promotion last week, whereas oh. it was, I, mean, I impressed myself by how bad it was. It was um, Phoebe's birthday, so I did a series of three emails all based around the number 22, and one of them was that I said for the next three days, there's going to be, because that's the, the amount of time she's celebrating, um, there's going to be the first 22 people to put to, to go to this, um, will get half price off any of my video trainings. But what I didn't mention was that you, when you, you had to actually put the promo code in to see if you were one of the first 22 people. And the promo code was Phoebe22. But I didn't make that absolutely explicitly clear in the email. So people were clicking the link. And I could see they were clicking the link because my shopping cart tells me how to do it. But I'd forgotten, say, put the promo code in to see if you're one of the 22. And, of course, people didn't know that, so they weren't doing it. So they were clicking the link, looking at the page, thinking I'm not one of the 22 and going away again. And I was thinking only Nicola Cairncross could turn her daughter's 22nd birthday into a promo opportunity. Into a, well, you can. You can turn anything. It's all about the reason because. You know the thing about because when you go to the top of the photocopier queue and say, I need to go first because and you can get get away with anything you know basically if you say anything because you can get away with stuff mm. so i thought oh this you know this is the same with marketing promotions you can turn anything into a marketing promotion if you try but try and do it well and make it not so complicated that your customers potential future customers know what to do <laughs> <laughs> luckily i had one last day of being able to send it out again just saying i hope you didn't miss this and i did screw up on telling you what to do <laughs> What's fueled your fire this week then? Oh, lots of things, actually. Oh, um, lots of things. I'll whiz through them. Um, 
somebody got me to help them, was it yesterday? It was either yesterday or the day before brainstorming a strap line. Oh God, you know how I love brainstorming URLs and strap lines. Love yeah, that. absolutely. Somebody wrote in and said there was 30 seconds in last week's podcast where the words I used and the tone of voice I used, she'd listened to it three times. It had brought her to tears and she played it to her husband. That was lovely. Oh, wow. Uh, I was interviewed for a guest blog. I don't know if you remember, but about last October, some website asked me, would I be, would I draw, would I be the judge of their Christmas competition? Well, this week they've done a, an interview with me in writing where they sent me it, actually, I didn't like it because I don't like Google Docs, but they sent me a Google Doc with the questions in it and I answered in the Google in the Google Doc, which meant I couldn't see the answers again. But anyway, I sent it off and she came back and she said, and she in her first email, she said, and I'll edit it into an interview. And she came back and said, well, I haven't edited it any, of, any of it at all because you communicate so well. I've just put it as you created it, which of course is perfect. And my favourite thing this week is a, a new client who after the first session sent me an email. Excuse the language, chums, but it says, um, your brilliant. It was a blooming corker, uh, which going back to that thing you said just now about language, you know, both of those were very appealing to me. She described that she'd done something really brave that she hadn't done for months. And actually, we hadn't addressed that. She just spontaneously felt up to doing it. And then she signed off with thank you for helping me to believe in myself, which I just thought was lovely. So fun experiences, good feedback and great testimonials has you you my fire this week. Nice, very nice. Well, mine's not not a big one, but it's a little one. I've you know been listening to Gary Vee again and watching him as always, and he's really saying a lot about numbers. He said something quite good this week, which was that it doesn't matter how many people are listening to you or watching you. It you know thinking particularly about podcasts and videos and all that stuff. It only takes one person to open something, read something, share something pass something on to someone who, to whom it's relevant and your whole world can change in, an, in a second. That's so he said, you know, yeah. it, was nice. it was very nice. And it reminded me that it isn't about the numbers. And, and then as if to prove it, Phoebe got an email and she passed it on to me and she said, this, is this a scam mum? Cause she's naturally quite cynic, you know, cynical and skeptical. And, um, and I said, no, it looks legit. She'd been invited to a big party in London for influencers yeah i saw that good yeah and and it's we looked it up and this this girl who um invited her she runs um a big blog uh, which is very important in fashion and, and london you know london fashion world and everything and phoebe had got to know her because phoebe had been trying to join an affiliate network so that she could pr- um get affiliate links for makeup and things she was promoting on her blog and because she, you know, she only had tiny numbers at the time, um, she was struggling a little bit with some of these affiliate networks. Anyway, this girl was very helpful and Phoebe, they had a good chat and everything. And she's obviously been keeping an eye on Phoebe because now Phoebe's going up to a very swanky party in Covent Garden with a load of other influencers who've all been invited to meet the major fashion and beauty brands in, in London. Yeah, that's so cool, isn't it? I know. And the, and the thing that really surprised me was I was thinking, oh God, you know, that's when I'm up in Sunderland. But she just said, I'm not, oh, I'm going, mum. <laughs> on my own yeah quite <laughs> I was like oh my god that's so exciting she said I've never been to London on my own before but I'm sure I can puzzle it out <laughs> yeah, and now that I'm 22 yes <laughs> it's funny isn't it so yeah I was really impressed with that but it, but the thing about the Gary V, you know just saying that it's, it's just not about numbers it's just it only takes one yeah but I thought that's quite an encouraging message for the yes, listeners isn't it that is and that's a nice juxtaposition of you being aware of that message and then quite quickly seeing it in action Would you like to showcase your business, product or service to between four to 600 highly engaged solopreneurs and business owners every week? We can offer a 30 second mid-roll slot and sponsorship branding on our website and in our private Facebook group. Just contact Nicola and nicolacairncross.com for more details. So you're, you've got a client chance of the week this week. Yes, I have. And I would like to keep it anonymous, so I'm going to read it out very carefully. You okay. know the whole truth, but I don't want our listeners to whole, know the whole truth. Oh. Don't have- now, can I just say at uh, one point, I do need to look at the URL. So if you tell me that, then I'll I edit it out. Yeah, we, okay. we, or even the person, I'm not going to give any clues at all. So I'm going to say for the benefit of the listener, 
that this challenge was sent in by a client of mine who is a podcast listener and it's on behalf of one of her own clients so she's asking advice our thoughts on how to best advise one of her own clients and generally the area that my client advises the her own clients is marketing and online marketing so um, my client's client runs a pottery in the UK adjacent to and possibly part of a spiritual retreat centre, um, which is very famous the world over. And over and above uh, retreats, it does an awful lot of other things too, including publishing. I don't know if she has a formal relationship with them. I don't know if they're just her landlord, whether it's an accident of geography. For instance, a trick it occurs to me she's missing is there doesn't seem to be a link from their site to hers. But anyway. Um, so I can't mention her by name or the business where she's located, um, but I can tell you that she is 70 years old and a potter, and my client has recently taught her how to do her own social media, and I think she's taken to it spectacularly well, given that she is eight years older than me, mm. and, and this was her first foray into it. She's, she's made excellent use, I wanted the listener to know, for instance, of piggybacking on the BBC show, The Great Pottery Throwdown. So when they, they made kettles, that week she talked about kettles. When they made certain sorts of firings, that week she talked about it and linked to it and blah, blah, blah. So for a 70-year-old, I'm deeply impressed with what she's done. And I've given Nicola links to her website, her Facebook page, and her Facebook profile. So here's the challenge. Uh, my client popped in to see the potter, uh, who's getting despondent because she's not seeing any increase in footfall to her shop, and she's not getting many new customers through her online shop, despite getting lots of engagement through her social media posts, brackets up to 5,000 each reach. She's wondering about her whole business model. How do people buy high quality pottery? Now my client's saying, probably not online as you can't hold it or feel it. I don't know that I agree with that, but, but it doesn't matter. She's not in many galleries as they don't seem to shift much and her stock is then tied up elsewhere, which is an experience that my artist client has as well. If your stock is in a gallery, it's tied up until the gallery give it back or make sales. The potter is looking at investing in a stand at a large specialist ceramics fair, but it's expensive and she's in her 70s and carting large stocks of ceramics is quite arduous. I mean, tell me about it. I can imagine. Oh, I wouldn't want to do that either. No, neither would I. <laughs> and she's saying, we both appreciate your thoughts. Is it worthy of a client challenge of the week? And I said, I think we'd make a great client challenge of the week, and I'll package it up and send it all to Nicola. You know, in terms of footfall, relatively speaking, they're in the middle and we're nowhere. Um, so I don't know how they deal with footfall into the shop. In many respects, that's the beauty of the geography, and that's why people go on retreat to that space, because it's beautifully remote. And, and I'm trying to prepare her for the fact that social media takes time and how long people can be on our list. At 62, I'm much closer to her in age than my, my, our, my our mutual client is here. And I feel some of her frustrations, and all of my clients want to make money now. And I certainly have an inability to cast stuff around. Would I buy property online? I think I would, yes. And I think and she's taken to social media like a duck to water. So, Nicola, over to you. I know you've, you've done some research and you've had some thoughts, haven't you? Yeah, because I did go and have a look and I thought, OK, the website's good. The social media is good. Um, but then I realised the fundamental problem. OK. <laughs> well, there's two, there's two, really. There's a, well, there's a fundamental problem and then there's a suggestion. She... She posts pictures of her stuff, some of which I like a lot, on her, fa her page and tells you what it is. Um, and then there's a link to the website. In fact, there's not. There's a, a link to what? Where do I go? To the arts and crafts store where I could... I can't buy it. The thing I've just seen... I can't buy it. There's no link to buy the damn thing. Yeah, so only share pictures of items and then directly link us to your sh that item in the shop. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yeah. yeah, because don't make me look for, don't make me no, look for it. No, no, no. Don't make me click more than once either. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't mind clicking more than once as long as it's blooming obvious what to click. Yes. But I've, I've just clicked on something I've seen that I like that I might want to buy and I've got no idea how to go about buying it. I can no. see a picture of it. Let's pick yeah. a picture. No, that just takes me back 
It takes you to her pottery, but not to her shop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, so that's that's a really big thing. That's, yeah. that's And the other thing is, um, does she have an Etsy or an Amazon store? Because... Um, well, I, she must have on her website. She must have an online shop on her website, I would think, doesn't she? Yeah, but you the, know what she's missing by not having an Etsy or an Amazon store? She's missing the um, the search engine optimization that those ah. give you. Okay. So she's, you know, she's she's solely reliant on the people that she drives to her website to buy from her website. Oh, okay, very good point, yeah. Where, right whereas right. if you've got an Etsy or an Amazon store, you've got um, people who bought that or also bought this, if yeah. you do your keywords right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she's got a very specific type of pottery, which, which um, you know, whether you like it or you don't like it, it's got, is, is made up of a certain kind of clay. It's a certain kind of finish. It's got lots of gorgeous specific keywords in it got you <laughs> which would work really well on one of those big platforms yep and you know she is doing a fantastic job of her social media but i'm wondering why there's one page here i've just gone to the page that you initially sent me yeah um which is that one which is all about the pottery or that particular person's pottery yes and then I've gone to, when I clicked on the picture of something I liked, I then get directed to another one. So has she got two Facebook pages? Is that what we're saying? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm finding it impossible to puzzle it out. It looks yeah. like yeah. Okay. All right. So actually the web, pardon the pun, that's probably a wrong use. The route to, the, the routes are confusing. The roads are confusing. Roads inwards to where we might buy are confusing yeah and i'm yeah. well i'm not getting any link to anywhere i might buy well you are on the left hand side there you're not getting a direct one but i what i always do from everybody's pages go to their website so there it is down the left hand side yeah. there okay so now we're going to go to the website so this is where yeah. it's going to get even more interesting yeah um okay pictures of some shelves not yeah. the most n- n- like that picture yeah. of potter yeah and it's all about the opening times and where, where they are and everything. Yeah. So, whereas really, I should, be, I should be going straight to, from something like social media, I should be going straight to the shop. The online shop page, okay. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing popping up to ask me, you know, to offer me a discount on my first purchase. No, okay. There's nothing popping up to entice me to give their name and email. It's usually yeah. stuff this, isn't it? There, there is below the fold there. Well, I'm not going to go below the fold. No, we're not going to go to the fold. No. The so that. Thing- you know, you've got to look at your own website on a mobile device because this this website, I suspect, is not going to work so well on a mobile. All right, let me do that while you're talking. Yeah, okay. Actually, yeah. What are you looking at it on? Is you, iPad. iPad. I'm going on an iPad, yeah. You're doing it on a phone? Yeah, I'm going to do it on a phone. Okay. You've absolutely got to because it's fundamental now that if your customers can't see the most wanted action when they immediately arrive on your site on a mobile device, yep. it's screwed. Okay. Uh, Chrome. This is the noise of Nicker and I problem solving, gaps. No, so I can also edit out the, the gaps. So it's actually quite fun because you can hear you and I trying to solve problems. In real time? Yeah. Tapping very slowly. <laughs> Have a master two fingered tapping. <laughs> so let me see what it looks like. Actually, I I don't like the website. I think it looks very old fashioned. Sorry. Yeah, it does. But um, that's the point. That's not. That's a, that's. You know, really, I I'm seeing pictures changing, but I'm not able to see all the pictures. No. Okay. Vertical. Yeah. And the links to go and shop are very tiny. Yeah. And there's nothing enticing me to go and to put my name and email in. And there's nothing asking me if I want to be kept. You know, she could be using push crew. Let's be clear. There is something that does that, but it's below the fold. We want it above the fold. Well, in, above and below the fold is so irrelevant nowadays because you're looking at mobile devices. Well, you, what you're saying is below the fold, you won't see it. Because I, well, I don't want you to say there's nothing enticing me to leave my email address because there is. And people, I, don't want, I don't want them to be confused and come and say, oh, there is. No, I want, I want them to understand the point. Okay, all right. Sign up to our newsletter is not going to entice me. Oh, it's certainly not tempting at all, I agree. No. Yeah. I need something fading in over the top of what I'm looking, offering me a discount on my first purchase. To yeah, okay. Yeah. Good, one. Yeah. Good one. And the other thing is, you know, it's no good having pictures of things on shelves. It's just not – I mean, I'm looking at a picture of 
You know, that picture's quite dull. That's sort of half a bucket, a half a bucket of glaze, isn't it? Well, I'm looking at half a bucket of glaze. I'm looking at a, a, a pile of bricks in a dark room. I'm looking at a nice thing of a water bowl. Now I'm looking at some shelves with some lamps on that looks like it could be a, a junk shop. And now I'm looking at some industrial shelves and a set of plugs. <laughs> and actually, those ones that you showed me just now on Facebook that you might wanted to have bought are not what's on page one of the online shop. Yeah, but that's just my taste, Judith. I mean, you can't, uh, you know, account for people's well, taste. Uh, no, but I think it's important because actually what is on the front page of the online shop is not her necessarily her most attractive stuff, and I think it should be. Well, I think it's, uh, the slider should sh- certainly be showing a selection of, of pots. Yeah. I understand what she's trying to do. She's trying to tell the story of the pottery, which is absolutely brilliant. But I think, you know, if you, if you want more sales, you've got to show people stuff they might want to buy. And it's only when people start then wandering about or give you their name and email and then you can start following up with the story, which would draw people in who hadn't bought first time round. Then, then, you know, that's when it, the story becomes important. And yes, it's lovely that people get to know the history of the piece they're buying. So that was my, my next thing, really, was on the online shop, which is presumably, well, it isn't an online shop, is it? Uh, yeah, I think it is. If you click on, you've got to click on the generic type. So I just clicked on decorative or abstract, yeah, yeah, the most attractive picture, and it's taken me. I can buy them on the next page. And so now, now I see the point, which is they're relatively expensive. So the question here is, um, how do people buy high quality pottery if you were spending? 90 to 190 pounds would you do that online or do you feel the need to hold it no i don't feel the need to hold it at all no, neither do i neither do i i'm looking for something that, that that suits my decor yeah and that is unique and okay uh, and, but what i would prefer rather than going straight through to a page of pictures with prices is i would prefer not to see the prices straight away i would prefer to see a bit of a story about yeah. that page. okay yeah and then and then when i click through say on this one which i rather like I would then get more of the story and then the price. Yeah. Okay. But I still, the other thing is, you know, if I buy from this, this website here, it's not, it's harder to build trust from your own shop than it is to buy from something like Amazon and Etsy because okay. they've got, um, what's the word, refund policies in place. They've got policies in place that if it arrives damaged, I'm covered. All right, so let me just understand. Etsy, she'd still be shipping, but Amazon, you have to, you have to supply Amazon with stock, do you? Um, I don't know is the answer. They've changed the way they do things. Yeah, yeah, I think Etsy's going to work better for her, perhaps, than Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's about getting on a big platform where the, yeah, stuff, the key yeah. ones are going to stay. Yeah, and where she's jumped through, and also where she's jumped through hoops to do with guarantees and refunds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, tell the story of the thing before I find out. Because you've got, you know, is it, is it decorative bottle two? Yeah, quite dull title, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah, want, it is. I want a gorgeous title. I want. And why can't it be called something? It doesn't need, you know, that that it could be called something like a like a painting that has a name or like a Greek goddess or something. Yes, yeah. exactly. Word association. Art. Yes. This let, one, the, let the items have a name. Yeah, Artemis, this one's called. Yeah. Okay, so, so quite a lot. Uh, they, I mean, uh, you know, she's doing a lot right, but yeah. she's, she's missing the, the thing of if she wants to sell more, she needs to make it easy for people to, to buy. All right, and before you go on, this question about um, she's not in many galleries and we don't want to hump stuff to exhibitions, you wouldn't need to if you've got your Etsy store no. because that fulfills both of those things. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and it's a global marketplace. As, yeah. as, again, you're going to hear on who and what's impressed. Yeah, okay. And, and because it is so specific, it's a specific kind of pottery which people either love or they don't, or yeah. they might come to love. Yeah. And the story is, is all... You know, and the other thing is how many, where, let's have a look at the process, is there? See, the process has got some pictures on it. I'd rather see some videos of her making the stuff. Ah, videos, okay. Yeah. So, like I say, doing lots right. Love the fact that, you know, the dog's on the site and everything. But it's all just a little bit static. Yeah. And it doesn't work on mobile. It worked too badly. On, oh, on, on your phone, it's not great. Okay. No. It's, it's fine on my iPad. It looks no different than what I'm looking at on your screen. Yeah. Well, you know, you can tell from your Google Analytics how many people are looking at it on iPads, iPhones. And okay. I wonder if she's got Google Analytics. That's a good one for my client yeah. to talk to her about. Yeah. 
Um, did you want to talk about uh, what we don't know if she's on Instagram or whether she's mastered hashtags? So she oh, God, yes. That, thank God you mentioned that because that got yeah. completely out of my head. Okay. Right. Instagram will be fantastic for this and yeah. so will Pinterest. So okay. she should have a, a Pinterest board. She should collect um, some of her, um, a couple of boards should be about her own inspiration, you know, stuff that she loves. And then, you know, she should certainly have a board for each kind, each kind of thing she's producing. And those boards should link. The link in those boards should go straight through to the shop. Yeah. So what about the what about the geographical angle of being in the middle of nowhere? Um, well, I think it's irrelevant now, isn't it? Yeah, I but I do I do think for my client um, that if if the spiritual organisation is her landlord, they could link because they have a massive global high traffic website. Why doesn't it say on their site? Have you seen our fantastic pottery? Yes, and the other thing you've just reminded me of is that it states very firmly on her website that she only ships in the UK. Why? Ah, is that what she wants to do? Yeah, well, okay. Why? What's the, what's the difference between shipping globally and shipping in the UK? No, you're a good point. I, I discussed it with Alice. 90 yeah. million percent of her market. Yeah, okay. So we're saying don't be too local in any no. sense. No. no. And that's actually quite a typical problem with um, people who who um, work with physical products and uh, don't sell online yet. They and and they, you know, they they do tend to think in terms of local, and it's about you know think in terms of um, traditional outlets like um, you know fairs and things like that. But as, as she says, you know, so well on the planet, she can pack up a lorry. No, uh, and I would like to counter that actually because the people I know who think like that they remind me of something which is they're very different from us. So you and I wouldn't go to a shop. Our first call, our first port of call for everything would be digital and online. We would ask Google, where can we get this? We don't, we're not interested in holding it, going to meet the person, going out of our way to do anything. We want an instant online solution. Now, there's another chunk of the world who are not like that. They want to go and see the person talk to them. There will be um, right-hand side people, you know, the stars and supporters. Yeah. So uh, we are giving our typical online digital viewpoint here as you might expect i think um, and I, mean, I love the fact that you that she has a physical presence and that you can go and visit the place and everything um let's just go through that now because if someone was going to this area and they loved they'd come across her and they loved her stuff and they would love to meet her then i love the fact that you know the summer times is is there and then there's sleepy times yeah <laughs> so that's nice and other times by appointment yeah so you do get the sense that you know she does like to meet her customers yes and there is a way to do that which is nice so that's and people i do know that people come from all over the world to this retreat center oh see I'm, i've missed this about the retreat center well it's it's famous yeah but where where is that where is it about uh, uh, well i told you in the email <laughs> yes i know but um where um... i'm not telling i'm not saying where it is no, no, we don't have no, yeah. I'm not, I, that wasn't what I was asking. I was asking you, where is the link to it? Where can I find out? There, in the first paragraph. Okay, let's go and have a look at that then. Now, people come from all over the world to there, and I'm thinking they should, link. if they're her landlord, they should do her a favour by putting on their website. I mean, look, look, just look who's there. All the famous gurus are there. And all, all the clients I know who are into, you know, um, personal development have been there. And she should be offering everyone well, who comes on quite, the Quite, quite. Because what a perfect um, uh, souvenir to take home with you. Absolutely, yeah. She should be offering everyone who comes on these courses a, a, a discount of something. Yeah, I think they're missing a tr- I think the two parties are missing a trick there. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I think she's in their grounds, or she's certainly, well, they share a name and it's close by, okay? I think she's in their grounds, and I think that they should be promoting her if they're her landlord. And I think that she should be asking, they, they need to partner up, you know. And and they could even put they could they could her on the, a link to her site on their thank you page. So yes, and they it. and in their joining instructions, she could get the ten percent off discount voucher for attendees. You know, mm. yeah, there's a lot to be done there. There's it? a trick missing with that with that relationship. And look at those flags at the top. People come from all over the world to that place. It's famous. Yeah, yeah, and and yes, that's right. And and when when they've got events on at this she that's somewhere where she could go with a small collection well that's true nicola that is have true. a little stand yeah if they would allow that that would be brilliant at lunchtime or something so people can come and see her and and then come over to the pottery out of hours yeah, yeah lots more to be done yeah and yeah. it sounds like she's a lively sort who's open to ideas so oh well she's taken to this like a duck to water so yeah. um you know onwards and upwards 
Yeah, good stuff. Well, we love these case studies, by the way, everyone who's listening. So if you've got anything, and, and you can see that we can do it anonymously. So, you know, we're not going to humiliate you online. <laughs> so, and on the, We love to, to, you know, put our heads together and come up with lots of ideas, don't we? Now, she, if she was listening, she'd probably be feeling quite overwhelmed right now. So what would we think would be the most important thing? Well, to- I think my client, who is a listener, won't be overwhelmed. And she'll be able to take this information to the potter. And they'll be able to work out between them how to do it in chunks. Yeah. So don't forget that the question came from my client who is a marketing expert and will will understand more readily what we've said and not be overwhelmed by it. Yeah. And be, a, be able to eke it out in ways that the potter can handle. Yeah. And have a conversation with the potter to work out yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Um, yeah. There's one more question here which is saying... She's wondering about her whole business model. Do we have any comment on about her whole business model? Or do we do? Do we think she's doing well, the right thing? Well, her business model is being a potter, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, I think her concerns are how to sell more. Well, stop, stop focusing on the UK and local, and open it up to the world, and 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 get yourself a, a shop on a global platform. Yeah, which in itself implies cred. It implies what? Sorry, cred. It, it takes away the worry from credibility. Cred. Ah, right, right. Sorry, yeah. you, you'd slipped into your youth vernacular. <laughs> cred. It takes it takes away those issues about well, who is this person? Because um, she's she's jumped through their hoops. Yes. On their site. Yeah. Because you know you're not going to spend ninety to two hundred quid on a on a, a random little website without knowing that you're going to be able to get your money back if it arrives broke. No. Good point. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, really, I can't see why you wouldn't ship globally. I mean, you know, it's just as easy to ship globally now as it is to ship down the road. Yes. And actually, if you've got a lot of outgoing parcels, post office will collect. Yeah, exactly. But, but generally speaking, doing a great job, and we're seriously impressed with the whole social media thing. Yes. And I think, I think my client might get her to listen to this. And, um, uh, of course, the beauty of that is you can listen to it more than once and get something different from it each time, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I heard, um, I got feedback from our artist friend who may well have been in touch with you by now because I recommended they did did talk to you. Um, and they've said they've listened to it several times. And so several people in the um, Facebook group for only the pod- podcast said they do listen to episodes <laughs> times and get more out of it the second and third listen oh that's interesting isn't it i I was really very thrilled by that okay that was a good one meaty we want more like that send Hmm. more challenges send them in so project updates no not yet we've got to do words of the week first oh word of the week okay passion is mine oh good tell me more people who are passionate about things regardless of whether there's any monetary gain or whether they can see an immediate monetary return. People who, who share things because they love them. And just passion is very sexy and attractive and warming to the heart and life-affirming. Right, passion is yours, vibe is mine. I'm obsessed with helping people feel good and keep their vibration high because when they do, so much good stuff comes their way. Yeah, totally, which comes back to you know changing my, my language to myself yeah. the weekend. Yeah. And yeah. I definitely feel much better afterwards. Yeah. And getting out of the house definitely raises your vibe, doesn't it? I mean, I feel really invigorated for that walk this morning, but I would never have done that if Irene hadn't, you know, dri- driven me to the beach and walked me along it and back. Yes, Irene, the new taskmaster. Well done. Uh, yeah, Irene, our listener, one of our star listeners. Yes, that, yes, no, I knew you were going to stay with Irene. Yeah. Sun- Sunderland always comes up on our downloads list. <laughs> Okay, project updates then. Yes, now I've written down here anything exceptional because I don't want you to bore me with the same old stuff every week about we're still at number 77 and nothing. You know, <laughs> better. Is, uh, could you, look, can we make this section now for a while? Is uh, nothing to report unless there's anything exceptional. Is there anything exceptional to report? Oh, but you know what they say, what you measure increases? Yeah, but it's quite dull listening. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if there's anything exceptional. We can continue to measure without involving the listener. I am um, thinking. Yeah, I suppose so. Let me just have a look because um, I didn't have time before we got back. It's getting a bit repetitive this second. Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Three months. Up yes. With. So that was silent for the listener. We were just looking at the pictures on Libsyn, listener, and oh. there's nothing very interesting there to report. <laughs> but. I, again, for my, my main inspiration man, Gary V, he's started talking about... It only takes one. 
it's very true, Judith. But it, he's also started talking about passive listening and how everyone is underrating podcasts because of the fact that you know everyone sort of reads the things that say podcasts is you know not growing that much and everything, whereas all the statistics say it is. But he says he started talking about you know I'm so excited about cars coming off the production line with um, the podcast app embedded in the entertainment system. Yes, he started talking about the intelligent home hubs. So you're going to get up in the morning, and he, he says there is a period in, the, in, in everyone's day when they listen to things passively because they are engaged in other activities, i.e. getting ready for work, um, you know, preparing dinner, things where you can't be watching video or the telly. You have to be in a room where perhaps your entertainment gadget isn't there, and that's when people traditionally used to listen to the radio and how um, he says, you know, people want ad-free radio, but what's going to be happening is people are going to get up in the morning and they're going to, they're going to say to their Alexa gadget or their, what's the other one? There's an, uh, something Apple. There's an Apple Home Hub or something. This is mm. way beyond me on my technology levels. Yeah. But people are starting to have smart houses that are controlled by these Home Hubs. And they're just going to wake up and they're going to say, put on Own It the Podcast, Siri or Alexa or whatever your name is. Yeah. And what people want is things they can passively listen to while they're going about their day-to-day life. Okay. And he's, you know, he's telling everyone to do podcasts. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm quite encouraged by that. Okay. So. I'd just like to report to Gary Vee that I never do any passive listening because I don't, that's the same reason you've got the telly on for company. Don't do that. Oh, okay. So you're, you're quite comfortable in... in no, the... I, like, I like perfect silence. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you are an exception, Judith. Most I am. And then, funnily enough, it's next to the words here, anything exceptional. Yes, Judith yeah. doesn't, doesn't like noise. <laughs> but, I mean, I remember Irving, particularly my ex-husband, he, he always has something going in the background. And, you know, he even goes to sleep listening to the shipping forecast because he just prefers not yes. to have silence. And Steve was like that as well. He always wanted something in the I background. I think it might be a man thing. Most of the men I know, are, uh, most of the people I know who have the telly on the back, in the background all the time are men, funnily enough. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I, I, I like it in the background as company when I'm not working, but when I'm working, I need silence. Absolutely. That's because yeah. we're of that age. But people don't anymore. Quite a lot of our listeners listen while they're working. Do, well, they listen to us while they're working. Yes, they do, because they do, graphic, dis- do graphic design work or something like that. Some, oh, right. some, some work you can listen while you're working. God, you wouldn't think anyone could concentrate with us banging on, would you? But they- no, no, <laughs> exactly. What's impressed you this week then? Well, I thought I was going to come up uh, with a dearth here, but um, I'm very engaged, which is a, a strange thing for me because I'm a bit 50 50 about that. I'm, I'm very engaged with the current season of MasterChef. Oh, yes. And the night before last, we went from, we go from the last five to the last four. I think we did. We either went from the last five to the last four or the last six to the last five. Don't talk about last night, by the way. I've only seen Mondays. There wasn't, there wasn't one last night. I'm, oh, talking about, I'm talking about Mondays. And I'm talking about the chef we met on Monday called Paul Ainsworth, who I'd never heard of before. And should have done, actually, because he entered Master Chef Professional. But I don't generally favour Master Chef Professionals. And I know that's awful because most people like that one best, but I don't. But here are the interesting things about Paul Ainsworth. Um, he has two restaurants in Padstow, which everybody had assumed was owned by Rick Stein. So yeah. he's, he's brave enough to have taken on Rick Stein on Rick's home territory. He trained with um, Gordon Ramsay, Marcus Waring and Gary Rhodes, who are all three of them from the old-fashioned school of often vile bullying in the picture. Yeah, yeah. But on Monday night, he got his results with the, with the finalists, with kindness, with loving support, and general, genuine appreciation. That struck he, me as well when I watched he it. He is my kind of coach. He did it with love, and it was genuine. He could tell he was really... Now, most of them, they shout at them, they bark at them, they're horrible to them, they threaten them, they say, you're running out of time. He said to all of them, often with a hug, which wasn't pervy at all, you know, well done. And I love your excitement. He found something to appreciate in the morning. For me, that's, that's the way I work with my clients. It's so much more of a nurturing medium for me than the vile bullying that's typical in, in uh, about chefs. Yeah, yeah, that, was, that really struck me as well when I was watching it, how unusual yeah. it was like it that. Was, he was, he, it's the only time I've ever seen it on MasterChef, because it's almost like uh, we need you to be a vile bullying chef, because that's what everybody knows chefs are, and it's, you know, it's hellish in the kitchen, it's hellish hot, and you're cutting yourself, and there's urgency. 
but actually he was just loving yeah yeah interesting about the thing about Padso because I picked up on that as well and I was thinking to myself I wonder if he he knows that not everyone can get into Rick Stein's restaurant so there must be an overflow of foodies desperate to be fed I think it's more that it is a foodie place so you might as well put on more foodie opportunities in foodie destinations yes I do um, bit, bit, uh, you know, and they say, you know, why open a car salesman next to another car salesman? Yeah, but still, I think if I were Rick Stein, I'd probably think, who's this Johnny come lately muscling in on my territory? But, but the fact is, he was brave enough to do that. And, and his places are distinct. And one of them has a Michelin star. So he's doing all right. And he's a nice man. So more power to him. Yeah, let's hope Rick Stein's an abundant kind of bloke. I think he probably is, actually, to be honest, because Rick Stein doesn't need to be worried by this. No, of course not. No. <laughs> <He's got all laughs> <reasons>. Quite. <laughs> right, you're going to like my story. Good. I was, I was also struggling this week for anyone to say who would impress me apart from myself and my daughter. <laughs> And obviously Irene, who's putting me up in the style to which I can certainly become accustomed here. <laughs> but um, no, we went out for this walk this morning and I was I took my camera with me because I wanted to do some filming if I saw anything nice and get some just, you know, general scenery shots, if not. And I was doing a general scenery shot and a chap came, I could t- tell someone come up behind me and he was being very courteous and not walking into my shot, which generally people do. And um, then I realised, I said, oh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you. And then he, I noticed he had a monster camera on him. So I stole your photographer and he said yes and we got chatting and he, he'd come from London, he, he'd been a photographer in London, editorial work for newspapers and now that he has come home to, he's been there a few years and he comes down the beach every day for about eight hours a day if it's a nice day looking for sea glass. Do you know what sea glass is? I do, all my friends in the Caribbean connect that. Right, exactly. Well, it's a global phenomena. Uh, it's it's where glass has been worn by the uh, the, uh, the thing of the ocean, the action of the ocean, up yeah. on the beaches around the world. Yeah, it's beautiful. People take isn't it, it and make art and jewelry out of it. And yeah. in general, this chap makes jewelry out of it, and he makes art out of driftwood. And a, it's all he's working on a patio that's entirely made up of white sea glass. And we, you know, he told us quite a lot about himself. And Irene was sort of standing there, you know, me chatting to this bloke, and um. It was it was just fascinating, and his passion for his topic was really illuminating. And then what happened then? And oh yes, and he said, oh, he said two people bought a piece only last night. He said so he sold two pieces of his jewelry or from his Etsy store to people in America. So people in America are buying his stuff that is washed up on the beach in Sunderland. Yeah, brilliant. And I just thought, oh, this is so awesome. And of course, I've obviously been checking out whether there's a space. Oh, he's got, he's got, oh, you'll like this. His, his web, his Facebook page is, he's going to get a little surge of visitors now. Hang on a sec. Let me just find it. Oh, where's it gone? I had it all ready for you. Here it is. The International Sea Glass Society. Ooh. And he's started the page two months ago and he's already got 235 organic people liked it. Mm-hmm. And he is, um, he's got a group, it's a closed group, but if it's free to join. And um, he basically is allowing other, other vendors, because apparently the sea glass um, world is quite restrictive. And if you're in a member of someone else's group or membership site, you can't sell your own stuff because it solely exists for the people who start the group, sell their stuff. But he's being all inclusive and abundant and he's letting people do whatever they like as long as they're kind to each other. Nice. Which well, I like. You know that pic- the picture at the top of there with the um, the clear. It's a bit like my beads from last week. Yes, yes, and and it's interesting that this has come up, come straight after that, isn't it? Yes, it People is. Pretty things. Jewelry. It's yeah, pretty things. Yeah. Yeah, I found a green bit today. Found lots of little white bits, and um, Ju- and Irene found an amber bit. You know, you see, that's the sort of stuff I would collect, bring home, put in a pot, and then later on dispose of because it's clutter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's taking it and turning it into Paul, his name is. Paul from the International Sea Glass Society. Just randomly met on a Sunderland beach. Yeah, um, nice. Just nice. A great story. Yeah. And he was passionate about it. And we saw him later on and we gave him all our bits of stones we collected. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah, so he had a haul from us. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, so where will I be next week? Um, I, don't, I don't know. Where will you be next to- week? Where? Chipping Norton with Jane Lewis. Oh, nice. Yeah, so the Cotswolds. I'm yes. Cotswolds. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, it's, well, it's, we'll see you next week then. Mission to, on a mission to see more of England. As well, or even in our podcast. Yeah, group, I'll, I'll put it dates. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, back. see you next week. All right, darling. Bye. Yeah. Bye.
You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com. 